Hello and welcome to the Yolo Polo Show. I'm your host, Katie Morris, and we're going to be talking about cycle and bike polo. I'm here with Kara Earl and Billy Quatch, and we're going to be talking about, like I said, bike polo and cycle polo. So the first question I have for y'all is, this isn't the most popular sport out there as of right now, but it is growing in viewers and players. Why do you think that is? <laughs> well, I think it's an interesting sport. I mean, it's definitely different from your football and your soccer and it's you're playing polo on a bike and not many sports you play on a bike so I think that just adds mm -hmm. the interest level. So cycle or bike polo was in the 1908 Summer Olympics. Do you think it has a chance to become an Olympic event again? Um, they're always adding things to the Olympics. It's always something different and that would be an interesting sport to watch because it just adds an intensity level being on a bike so it could definitely be back one day. There's two different types of cycle or bike polo they call it two different ones one is on grass which is more the traditional one which resembles the one that plays on horses and then the hard court one is when you play like on a hard court but it's a little bit different you usually play with only three people um which do you think would be more fun for viewers to watch um i think the hard court polo would be um more interesting to watch because it adds um hard surface as a level of danger that um being played on grass doesn't add, so I think players would be more physical to, um, and prone to injury, and that adds excitement. No, I agree. Um, why do you think this type of football hasn't reached the popularity of other sports as of right now? It's very different. Um, I don't think a lot of people really, I don't know, if you're not good at riding a bike, I would assume that you probably wouldn't want to play the sport. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. Well, it looks like we're out of time. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for watching the Yolo Polo Show. Hope you tune in next time. Abby Middleton and Kristen Chapman. Andrew Epperson. Yes. That's my name. Our newest celebrity. Oh, good. <laughs> good routine. <laughs> Your father was a swine. <laughs> <laughs> and then so much. Oh, everyone, talking to Potter. <coughs> Hit me up. <coughs> so we'll talk for an hour. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Abby Middleton and today I'm here with Kristen Chapel and Andrew Epperson. Hey guys, how are y'all? Pretty good, good. How, how are you? Are you? Today we're going to talk about Greg Hardy, the 27-year-old defensive end who's caused lots of problems and lots of drama. And we're going to get down to the bottom of this and see what's going on with him. Um, ESPN has been trying to show light in him and kind of bring him back and kind of 
make him seem like the, the victim here. So what do you think about this, Andrew? How do you think ESPN should or should not be doing that? Or? Well, when you look at a big corporation like ESPN, you've got to understand that reporters are going to have their own opinions on things and push their own agendas. So with something like ESPN where people naturally get most of their sports news from it, to take a position on this that's absolutely unflattering towards the organization itself is something that you'd think that they'd stay away from, especially with a case like this when it's domestic abuse, domestic violence, something that America itself is now taking, looking at it in a new light and saying this is kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so for ESPN to do that, it, it really shows negatively on them and I, I absolutely abhor it. I agree. Yep. Um, second question, um, Hardy was free to be signed on March 9th with any team he wanted to, he maybe picked up by, but he hasn't been picked up at all. Why do y'all think that is? Well, I think he hasn't been picked up because he's really not doing himself a favor by claiming that he's innocent and that he's not doing anything or he's not done anything, especially when, um, when there's video evidence and there is um, pictures and all that kind of stuff. So he's really not doing himself a favor, especially in interviews right. when he's talking about that kind of stuff. And I think NFL teams are picking up on that. And um, they are saying, you know, he needs to be more mature. Right. He needs to own up to his mistakes. Right, I agree. And some would say they're talking about maybe wondering if Hardy will re-sign with the Cowboys. Y'all think that's a chance for him? or? I wouldn't say that they're going to re-sign him because I know Jerry Jones, their owner and general manager, I know Cowboys fans get sick of hearing that name a little, uh, t uh, several times throughout the year. <laughs> Uh, but the negative backlash that they got for signing him the first time, just because we all know that he's one of the best defensive players in the league whenever he's playing. I mean, he's absolutely great. He was that with the Panthers. And the Cowboys got to see glimpses of that throughout the season. But the negative backlash that they got from pretty much all of America, including Cowboys fans, I think that's enough to deter them from giving him another contract. That's for sure. Yep, I completely agree. Well, that's all the time we have today, guys. Thanks for joining us. I'm Abby Middleton.
Hi, welcome to the YOLO Polo Show. My name is Billy Quash, and today we're going to talk about the Rio Olympics, specifically the U.S. Men's National Water Polo Team. Today I'm joined by Kara Earl and Katie Morris, and so let's get right into it. Um, so there's a lot of problems that Rio is facing right now, including, including water contamination and the Zika virus outbreak. Uh, what do you think about this? <laughs> Um, if they don't get it handled pretty quickly, then it could be really a big problem. Um, the USOC has already told athletes to stay home if they didn't feel comfortable being in Rio, and that risks their health. So, I mean, they only have about four months, so they kind of need to figure this out pretty quickly. Yep, and so getting into the U.S. men's uh, national water polo team, um, they're led by Tony Azvedo. He's nicknamed the Savior. Um, this is going to be his third Olympic um, event. How do you think he's going to perform being so old? Um, he's had a long career. He did great all through high school. He was MVP all four years when, on his high school team. He excelled at Stanford. Um, I think he's got it in him. He got him to the silver in Beijing, so I think he can pull this one out. Um, speaking of returners, there's only four returners from the 2012 roster in London in which they finished eighth. How do you think having such um, a large group of inexperienced people will impact their performance? I mean, it could kind of go either way. They could either, it could work amazingly and they work super well together, but then again, it could also hurt them because it also depends on all the experienced players that are coming back and gonna be playing in the games. All right, and um, lastly, what are your predictions for the Rio games this summer? Um, I see us and Germany being um, in the finals. Um, I'm going to say us and Italy, and then maybe the score being 16-14. I, right. I hope we win. I don't know if it'll happen, though. <laughs> well, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, until next time, I'm Billy Quatch.
Hello and welcome to Sports Talk. I'm your host, Kristen Chapel, and today we are here with Andrew Epperson and Abby Middleton. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Thanks for having Thanks. us on. All right, so every Razorback fan knows that the quarterback position is open. Brandon Allen is going off to the NFL draft, um, and now there's a battle between Austin Allen, Ricky Town, Ty Story, and Rafe Peavy. Who do you think is going to get the Razorback quarterback position and why, Andrew? Well, I mean, I think the obvious choice right now, the number one guy for Brett Bielema, Dan Enos, is Austin Allen. He's Brandon's brother, as you already talked about. He's got the most experience so far going into this season, and I think experience for Brett Bielema specifically is a really, really important thing when picking a quarterback. These other guys are kind of unknown. You think about Ricky Town, and you see he's got a huge arm. He did whenever he was at USC, but he kind of fell down the depth chart, and now he's seeming to fall down the depth chart here as well. There may be some something going on up here mentally trying to get the hog and as Brett Bielema likes to call it. So I think Austin Allen's probably the main choice right now, and I think we'll see him coming out of the tunnel next year as a starting quarterback. I agree. So, like you said, Allen's probably the best pick for um, quarterback. You mentioned he's Brandon's little brother. Um, he already has college experience because he's got the feel for the end zone. He's thrown into the end zone. Um, do you think he will crack under pressure if he does get to start? Abby? Um, I think it's definitely a possibility. I mean, the pressure and the nerves when he gets out there, it might be different than starting in the middle of a game versus starting the game period. But I think he has some big shoes to fill, but I think he can do it. He's been watching his brother, and I think he's been here for a while, and he's going to be a junior. I think he's ready. So. All right, so if he does start, do you think there's going to be a lot of controversy between fans in general, or do you think there's already controversy saying he's just starting because of his, brand, of his brother, Brandon? Well, I think it's ridiculous that there is controversy about that, that people are kind of judging how he plays the quarterback position based on his last name. Because people remember Brandon Allen in his first couple seasons starting and some very, very, very low points in Razorback history. And so people are just assuming that that's how Austin Allen's going to be. I think that's absolutely ridiculous to judge somebody based on their last name. If he's the guy who should be able to go in there and lead the Razorbacks to victories next season, he should be the guy starting regardless of what his name is. I don't care what it is. I agree. So we are out of time. Thanks so much for joining with us. Yeah. <laughs> Or the third one. Okay, I'll start it. Um, yeah. Like when I was young. It's not quatch. <laughs> just make, just double check you. I'm gonna say quatch now. That, that's what it is. Wait, what did you think? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna do this quatch. But you say that.
Katie, Katie. Yeah. Can I say her? I can't say your name wrong. Caddy. Hi, Earl. Welcome to the Yolo Polo Show. I'm joined here today with Katie Morris and Billy Quatch, and we are going to talk about polo. Um, so polo was introduced to America around like 1876, and they are there are 250 active polo clubs in America right now. Why do you think that there's not a lot of media coverage on this sport? Um, it's hard, especially in the South, because all we want to see is football, basketball, baseball on TV, and we've made these athletes into celebrities. So the media is kind of just giving us what we want because we want to see into their lives all the time. And uh, in, from 1900 to 1936, polo uh, was actually an Olympic sport, and um, it was it was cut in 1936, but it had a uh, fan base of 30,000 at international matches and such. So why do you think that it was dropped from the Olympics if it had such a fan base? Um, I, think, I, I think it was dropped because of the inconsistency, inconsistency that it had. In the first 40 years of the Olympic Games, it only appeared in five events. So that's five out of ten of the Olympics. So they just couldn't get a handle on sport and have a um, consistent um, viewership to keep it a sport, so they just dropped it. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of rule changes in those years. Um, what could the United States Polo Association do to um, increase their popularity? Well, they could um, start by looking at what people do overseas. Um, I feel like polo is more of um, a more interest, a more popular sport in like the UK and countries in Europe. So they could check out what those organizations are doing to keep um, their sport up and follow that model. That's definitely true. That is all the time we have today. My name is Kara Earl. Thank you for joining us.
Good evening and welcome to It's Just Fun with Andrew Epperson. I am obviously Andrew Epperson and I'm joined today by two fantastic anchors in Kristen Chapel, Abby Middleton. Guys, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you thanks for having us. us. Well, we are going to talk today about Tyler Summit. If you've been living under a rock, maybe you haven't heard of it, but Tyler Summit is Pat Summit's son, who is the was the head coach of Louisiana Tech and just got busted for a little thingy majig where he had an affair with his, with one of his players and according to a few sources, impregnated the player who will remain unnamed. Uh, we will start over there with Abby. Do you think that this kind of proves that hiring a young coach, I mean, he was 22 whenever he was hired, mm -hmm. is that maybe something that teams should stay away from? I think he was definitely hired at a very, very young age, and obviously because of his name, it was, he had an advantage getting hired at that young age because I think that is too young to get hired. I mean, it depends on the talent. He obviously had the talent. They were great, and he did a great coaching job, but I think it was too young for him to handle it and maturely, especially with his relationship with the team. Obviously, he couldn't really handle it, but I think 22 is pretty young. Well, he started off his career there with some uh, pretty unimpressive seasons, not really living up to his mother's name there while she was at Rocky Top. I'll move to you now, Kristen. Uh, will, I mean, he is Pat Summit's son, so will he get another job coaching sometime in the future? Um, I think it's a possibility. He is very, very young, and he did get hired very young, but he still has a long career ahead of him, but I do think Right now, he needs to focus on his family and on his marriage. Um, you know, this is a big situation that came out, and right now he needs to put his priorities straight and focus on, you know, working on his family and working on his marriage before he gets back into coaching. But, yes, I do think it's a possibility that he can because he still does have a long road ahead of him. Well, we'll just see how that all plays out. And now this, obviously, there's some light shed on this because of how big of a name that he is in women's sports. But how often do you think we'll, – we'll go to you now, Abby – how often do you think that these kind of player coach affairs happen and just don't get reported? I think they very frequently happen. I think they're just behind the scenes and a lot of them, they just get away with them. But I think it's a big problem that a lot of them we may not even know about, like you said. But I think it happens frequently and it needs to change, obviously, because it's getting a little out of control. Well, we'll see how that all plays out. All right, well, that's all the time we have here on It's Just Fun with Andrew Epperson. And remember, it's just fun. Have a good night. It's just yeah. fun. <laughs>